for this. So welcome everyone. It's, it's, it's fantastic to have you here. Um, it's just about seven o'clock, just after seven o'clock. So we're going to get started. Um, so this is, this is a special night. This is the first ever workshop in the, the district's first in talent accelerator series. So let me tell you a little bit about what this is about. Um, if you're, if you're a district C alum, you know, we made a promise to you that your, uh, your engagement in the district C community doesn't need to end on pitch night. Um, you can't quit us. Like we're, we're here forever. We're going to support you forever. And for those of you that are upcoming district C students, that's a promise that we make to you as well. So as a part of that commitment to you, um, the first in talent accelerator series is, is just what it sounds. It's, um, uh, working with all of you, the next generation of talent, and accelerating your development into your professional lives. So accelerating your development from student to professional. Um, so this series of workshops, which will happen with some frequency starting, starting tonight, is designed for all of you. And, and uh, you know, th this first kind of inaugural session, I think, is, is going to be a special one. Um, we have a lot of District C students who uh, want to differentiate themselves, right? Whether it's on their college, college applications, in a job interview, in a scholarship application, and they, they know that their District C experience is, is something unique and something special. Um, and they often ask us, how, how can I use my experience to uh, kind of set myself apart um, in these applications or, or, or in these job interviews? Um, and so this workshop is really designed to help you kind of reflect on your District C experience and other experiences you've had, frankly, um, to communicate something truly unique about your own growth or your own skills or your own strengths. And I, I couldn't be happier to welcome Carmen Kent and, and Kristen Angel as our experts for this session. They're coming at this topic from two very different um, angles. I was about to say angels, but angles. Uh, I, got, I have your name in my head, Kristen. Um, they're coming at this from two very different angles and perspectives, and I think uh, all of you listening will have an opportunity to, to really gain a lot from these perspectives. So here's the, here's the format. Um, the three of us will be on camera, uh, and I will kind of facilitate the session. It's going to be mostly Carmen and Kristen doing the talking. Um, they're each going to share a little bit about their perspectives. And then in the second half of the, of the hour, we'll open it up for some question and answer. Then at that point, if anyone in the audience wants to jump on camera or jump on the microphone, you can ask a question. Throughout the session, feel free to open up the chat, which you should have access to down. Uh, if you just hover over the bottom of your Zoom window, you, you should, should see some control panel buttons uh, look for the chat, open that up, feel free to, to ask a question in the chat. Um, Anne is moderating the chat. She'll pull some stuff out of there. She'll let me know. I can communicate that. Uh, if you've got a question or if you want to jump on the mic, just let us know in the chat and we can do that as well. Um, other than that, if you could, uh, please keep your audio and video muted. Uh, that way we'll kind of be able to c control the room a little bit better. So I want to start with just like, could each of you just briefly introduce yourselves and t tell us who you are, what experience you're bringing to this, and then uh, we'll come back around and you can dive into kind of your broader, your broader perspective. Carmen, do you want to start? Sure, happy to. Um, well, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I um, am really excited about the work that District C is doing. And so it's it's so great to be in a Zoom chat with some District C folks. Um, I, let's see, uh, I moved down from Michigan in 2007 and uh, have been in North Carolina now for um, since then and uh, worked for briefly for the Emily Krzyzewski Center. So in a K to college model, um, providing after school programming for lower income, but high achieving, really amazing students. Um, and then transitioned from there, I spent the past nine years with the Moorhead Kane Foundation and read 
hundreds of thousands of <laughs> applications um, over the past nine years uh, for the Moorhead Kane Scholarship. And the Moorhead Kane program uh, really offers some really unique summer experiences as well. And so um, I served as an advisor and in the selections process um, as uh, a, an assistant and the director of selections as well. And uh, so read a lot of um, great applications and essays and um, learned some lessons through that. I am currently the director of enrollment management for Trinity School of Durham and Chapel Hill, which is a TK through 12th um, classical Christian uh, school. And um, so that is a very uh, different um, a pivot for me, I guess, professionally, um, but one that I'm really excited about and um, and just, you know, kind of still processing with the difference from a high school senior to a kindergartner. Um, so it's, it's been a really fun transition for me, but that's a little bit, I guess, about me and and, um, and I um, I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of this. So thank you so much for inviting me. I hadn't thought of that. At Moorhead Kane, you're reading applications from high school seniors at <laughs> Trinity, you're working with families who are trying to enroll children as young as four and five. Yes. Uh, wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, and it's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of parallels. Um, the, hmm. I talked to Dan and Kat a little bit about my transition from higher ed and how I was seeing kind of some unhealthy trends in how, how many things students were doing and how busy they felt they needed to be to be successful um, and how um, a lot of those habits kind of start when kids are pretty young um, and so so it's been an interesting um, interesting transition and I'm, I'm sure I'll continue to learn and grow which is great yeah and I bet that last comment is really resonating with a lot of the the folks in the room um, I imagine we'll circle back to that in, in a few minutes. Um, Kristen, would love to have you introduce yourself. Thanks for having me on this thing. I'm super excited to talk about um, my district's experience and how I wrote about it and where I'm going next year. But um, I'll start. I got involved with District C through the semester model. It was, I think, almost a, a year and a half ago now I started at District C. Um, I was nominated through NCSSM Online. Um, and then I did the semester model. I worked with three different businesses um, and three different squads um, over the course of a semester in school. So I had a longer experiences experience than a lot of people did, but um, that was really amazing. And I took that and I ended up writing about it in my college essays because it was so transformational and just such an amazing experience. Um, so I can share some expertise on like how to trend transfer your district C experience into something that admissions officers want to read. Um, I just graduated from high school in June. Um, I'm going to Duke next year. I am a veteran of this process and I can say that it is very stressful. <laughs> You're in for it, but um, hopefully this can help and um, me and Carmen can share some advice that'll help you get through it without too much pain. Yeah, so you're starting to see the two different perspectives coming together here, right? This is a this is a fantastic panel. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the floor over to Carmen for kind of some more extended comments and some tips in kind of more workshop style fashion, uh, and then we'll we'll circle back to you, Kristen, in a few minutes. But uh, Carmen would love to would love to dive a little deeper. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said. Um, Moorhead Kane gets about 2,000 applications each year from all over the world. So um, have read a lot of different applications, have worked closely with um, the UNC Undergraduate Admissions Office as well. And um, just wanted to share some reflections that I had um, through the, that process. I think for me, I wanted to kind of talk about three main things. The first is how important it is to kind of establish a foundation, right? Like Kristen talked about how overwhelming and um, big and scary this process can seem sometimes. Um, and so it's really important to know who you are because essentially you're kind of pitching yourself as an applicant, right? Um, 
to these different universities and colleges. And so you want to focus, in, in my opinion, right, this is all in my opinion, but um, I think that it's important to focus on your strengths. So really looking at where are the areas where you shine, where you thrive, where, what brings out the best in who you are, um, your story. So what has shaped you about maybe how you were raised or um, situations or circumstances that, that have come up in your 18 years. Um, and then your soul, so your core values, what motivates you, what drives you, um, why do you do what you do? And so with strength, story, and soul, I think that those are really important things to think about. Now, getting to that is a hard thing to tackle as well, right? So I um, would often encourage students to give yourself opportunities for regular reflection. So maybe you're carving out 20 minutes, three times a week, kind of leading up to your drafting phase. Or if you think back, if you're a freshman in high school, maybe you do kind of um, a biannual review of this is how first semester went, this is how second semester went, these are summer experiences that I had. Um, and not just kind of listing them, but really thinking, I, I just went through this, I just experienced this, and this is how I've grown as a result. This is how it shaped me. Um, so the tendency for students is to pick a topic and address it really head on in a concrete kind of black and white way. And what admissions directors want to get at is that gray area, right? So an example is I did a project. Here are the details about the project, right? So that's a bit more passive than a different approach where um, you might say, in doing a project, I was shaped by an argument or a conversation that I had where people disagreed, and this is how um, our different opinions played out and how we worked through that to um, come together for a stronger or a, a better outcome overall, right? So essentially the product, the project, is a byproduct and the growth that you experienced in, in doing that project is the focus of, of the essay or of the, the response, right? Um, so I also think that it's important to incorporate others' voices because a lot of times you're in your own head and you don't know how to uh, articulate certain things, but it can be really helpful to talk with someone like Kristen, um, who's just been through the process, who can give you good advice, um, or other adults um, who, who've worked with you and have maybe more experience and can help you articulate um, the value that you've added to um, a project that you worked on or a way that you collaborated with them, right? I know, I think District C does some coaching and some written feedback. And so reflecting on what others have said about your work um, is helpful, I think, in that process too. Um, and uh, Kat also told me about a take five tool that District C use, uses. So kind of asking questions out of curiosity on one thing for five minutes. Is that, I think that's right, maybe, Dan. Um, but it's, it's an opportunity for you to really dig deep on a, an idea for a topic and um, focus on that depth over breadth, right? Um, and really get to the intellectual curiosity there. Um, and then from an admission perspective, admissions teams spend a lot of time in the summer, right? You think that admissions teams are focused on the fall when people are applying and the spring when they're admitting people, but a really a lot of work in the summer happens, um, and I'm in the thick of it right now, looking at the questions that are asked on the application. So they are essentially detectives. They're trying to make sure that the questions that they're asking are getting at the answers that they want, right? So they're not necessarily looking for a wide variety of answers and the kind of well-rounded, I've done a little bit and everything, right? Um, they're not necessarily looking for um, something that's totally unique from 500 of the other essays kind of written on the same topic. Um, as much as they are asking, what are they learning about the student as a result of what they're saying, right? So a lot of times we would read an essay and just say, wow, they used a lot of big words. They kind of talked about it in this lofty sense, but so what? 
you know, why does it matter? Is it a checkbox or is it something that's really led towards positive, long lasting change that's going to be bigger than that individual student? Um, and so, you know, I think everyone is trying to manufacture their application. And so admissions offices are really looking at, um, you know, how are students being real and, and in, in being real, you best showcase your personality and individuality, right? So, but you can tell when it's forced and when it's someone else has read this essay or put their hand on it and, and, and shaped it a little bit. So really you wanna, we, we talk about if you dropped your college application on the floor and someone picked it up, would your bet, if your best friend picked it up, would they be able to know that's your voice, that's a reflection of who you are, not who you've been told you need to be, right? Um, so in that reflection that I talked about earlier, really thinking um, about what has prompted your involvement. Was it a parent or someone just telling you you should do this because it looks good on a college application? Or was it a calling or a deeper purpose that you felt um, to get involved? Um, how does it impact others? Is it really just about you at the end of the day? Or are you inspiring and mobilizing other people with a passion that you have? Um, so those are things, nuances that, that definitely come through in how a student writes about themselves in the college application process. Um, so, and I don't know how I'm doing on time. I have one like example. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give, we see a lot of students who write about STEM projects. STEM seem to be kind of the hot topic um, in recent years. And so maybe they pick a topic and they say, I love science. So junior spring, I decided to, I, to start a STEM group. We have regular meetings and we talk about topics in science. We had a bake sale that raised $500 for our STEM club, right? So here's an example of, of a topic, right? That's focused on the project. And sure, there, was, there were some good outcomes, but to really understand the context and the depth for what, that what has been said in those three sentences, right? In that brief response, an, an admissions officer might ask, okay, they say they're interested in science. So is there a demonstrated interest in the classes that they've taken? So does that line up with um, them taking more science classes in their transcript, right? Does the reference talk about a longstanding interest in science or give um, more context for why the STEM project um, or the STEM group is important to the greater school community. So we're kind of, the admissions officers are kind of looking for triangulation in what the student says, in, in how its value is validated by the reference, and, and how it's reflected in other pieces throughout the application. So it's, I think the tendency is to think that it's just about the essay, but there are other pieces that you want to see all kind of tied together. Um, so another question that might come up is, why did this student just start this their junior spring? So was this a class requirement? Is this something they just wanted to hurry up and put on their college application? Um, or you know, was, there, was there more there? So the timing of it, right? The scope of it, right? So what's the impact? How many people are involved in this group? Or is it just kind of a small group of friends that meets at someone's house on a Friday night, or is there a website or social media or other evidence that the student points to that can give credence to the fact that this is a legit group that's really um, having, having an impact. Um, so the frequency, when they say regular meetings, they're meeting regularly, is that quarterly, weekly, are there underclassmen who are ready to take it on after them? So they're looking for evidence that this is um, an active um, initiative and it's something that's gonna continue on after the student graduates. Um, and then they, the, in, in the example I gave, they talked about raising money. So great, glad that you raised $500 for this club, but what are you doing with the money? Why did you raise the money? Um, is this a one-time effort or is this a sustained um, 
fundraiser that you're going to continue doing? Um, and, and how will what you're putting the money towards impact others, right? Is it just that, you know, you can buy pizza for your next group meeting or is it, um, that you're going to buy microscopes that you then take to the local middle school to continue to grow this STEM group. So I hope that's helpful in just kind of giving an example of how you can write a few sentences and how an admissions officer really picks those things apart to get context um, and depth. So a different way to write that example that I, that I shared would be something like this, right? So I've loved science since fourth grade. My teacher said that I spent so much time exploring our bird unit that I asked for resources to study as many birds as I could over the summer. She knew that I would maximize our science curriculum. And in middle school, I started to see that girls in my class didn't take science seriously and wanted to change that in upper school. So I worked with the science faculty to create a STEM club, which has grown from 12 members in ninth grade to 40 members to date who meet weekly with experts in the field and plan projects for our school and to do community outreach. Recently, we brought in you know, an example speaker to talk about an example topic, and it inspired us to raise money for an example cause. I polled our members to make sure everyone's voice was heard and how we could host an event um, for members, um, I'm sorry, and then worked with the principal and school board to make it a district-wide STEM fest held every year. This year, we have the president-elect shadowing me in the planning process so everything goes smoothly in the handoff. Right, so that's obviously more than those, those three sentences that I started with, but it gives the reader of this college essay so much more context for, wow, this kid took a lot of initiative um, to grow the, the club, to incorporate the principal and the, and the um, school board, to make sure that other people's voices were heard, and to, to mobilize and, and um, just equip uh, young, un, younger students um, with what they needed to be successful to carry on their efforts. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, for me, I think, you know, um, I'm happy to talk through resources too, but so much of the college application process is kind of balancing painting an authentic um, picture of, of who you are, um, but also what you learned in that process and, and how you've demonstrated a good sense of self-awareness in that process. I think those are, are things that are really hard for a 17 year old, but you know, carving out time, talking to people who've been through the process, talking to other adults and thinking through what are the questions um, that admissions officers might have um, about what I've written. Is it about a project or is it about how I've grown through that process. Does that make sense? So I hope that's helpful. That's fantastic. I, I love the example at the end. What would you, kind of going back to, I'm struck by this, this notion of trying to communicate, trying to get the, the reader to know you versus to know what you have done. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a distinction and you can use the latter to do the former, but in the, in the case that you just read, the better example that you just kind of went through as a reader, what, what are the, like the attributes of the, of the candidate that you draw from that STEM story? The one that was written, you know, kind of from, from elementary school all the way through to the end. Like what, what do you, what do you learn about that person? Based sure, on how sure. It was written? Um, so in the, the light, the latter example that I gave, I, as if I were to read that as an admissions officer, I would see the student has a demonstrated interest in science, um, and that's validated by other faculty who've worked with the student, right? Even though, um, you know, even though the student's still writing about their relationship with the teacher, it's, it's incorporating another voice. Um, so I think that that adds more credence to it. Um, and it talks about the progression a little bit from, um, uh, from fourth grade, but then in middle school, how they, they saw that something was wrong. They saw that there was a problem and they were 
were bothered enough to to do something about it, but they also had the wherewithal and the tools and the guts, you know, to move on it and to actually um, take some action steps. And so, you know, sometimes I think it's easy to notice those things and say, oh, that's too bad. Or I still like science, even though all the other girls in my you know, class didn't. Um, it's, it's saying, well, why, why is that? And how can it be different? And how can I be part of the solution? Right? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the admissions officer might get some of that from that example. Uh, let's see. So they also gave context for when we started the group in ninth grade, it was 12 members and it's grown to 40. Um, and we meet weekly with experts in the field. So this is not just, <clears throat> you know, a couple of my friends that hang out and we talk about science. This is, yeah. um, you know, there's more structure to it. There's more intentionality around it. Um, and, and I think, there's, there's depth there in what's being delivered and how it's being done in a different uh, way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then <clears throat> it also talks about, you know, leveraging school resources and talking to <clears throat> people of high authority. Excuse me. <clears throat> no worries. If you, so, if you need a break <laughs> to get a drink, we can. No, I'm okay. Pivot. Just let me know. Thanks. Um, so, you know, someone who is courageous enough to follow through with um, seeing a need and knowing that maybe I don't have the, the power or the authority to put this all together, but I, need, I know that I need to work with my principal and my school board to convince them that this is something worthwhile and that we can partner together to make it better than I could on my own, right? So that collaboration is really important. Mm -hmm. And um, again, the initiative to, um, to know how decisions are made and, and how work gets done and um, to put yourself in there intentionally and say, I'll do it, right? Um, and then, you know, it, the example also talks about polling other people in the, the group to make sure their voices are heard to make sure that there are underclassmen that are gonna continue the effort. Um, so that makes uh, admissions officers understand this is not just a one and done thing. This is something that um, is really a student's legacy. Uh, and so I think, I think those are the things that you might pick out of that latter example yeah. that I shared. Yeah, that's great, um, fantastic. Um, I imagine there will be some questions about that because that, that's a really specific example that I think we can learn a lot from and we can circle back to those when we get into the Q&A. But Kristen wanted to give you a chance to um, kind of share your perspective. Um, so feel free to take the next few minutes and, and let us know what you're thinking. Yeah, definitely. Um, I 100% agree with everything that Carmen said and I can see like how I got to that point where I was writing S say that had those meaty details in it that I, that I didn't start with at first but I ended up with in the end and I, I think that's what really added value to my application was writing stuff that showed how I was really involved in my school and not just surface level stuff so and district C was one of those things that was was I almost had to dig deeper into to really reveal so I started um, this application process with the common FSA it's the first one I wrote I figured I'll just start the common FSA, get one done, and then I can worry about the supplements when it comes time for that. So I, so I wonder about District C so bad that I had no idea how to talk about it. I sat there and I was like, how am I going to tell um, five months worth of awesomeness about District C in 600 words? Like, I don't know how to do it. Um, I wanted to show like how District C was special, how it made me special, but I really just had no idea. Like what to say um and i wanted to like i wanted to convey how special district c was and how it changed me but i didn't the common app prompts were not like really vibing with me i just wasn't feeling it so i ended up getting help from one of my friend's moms who's an english teacher um that like knows how to do creative writing really well and um convey like a story almost and that's what she told me she told me i know ann's told me this before but pick out a story Find a little thing 
it doesn't have to be the whole time, but find a little chunk of a story that really was important. That was where you experienced a change or something really big happened rather than, f- than focus on this whole time. Even though the whole time was great and I wanted to talk about it like in chronological order, talk about the business partners, talk about my different groups, I knew I could not do that. So I picked a little nugget instead. I chose this really, really great story that I had um, with, it was me and my group members. We all finally felt this bond about how we got close and we made this hairpin turn and we came back and our group was stronger than ever. Um, I'm not giving enough justice right now, but it was a, it's a great story. And so I, I decided that I was going to write about this story. Um, and I'd, I'd written some stuff in the past. I'd brainstormed, um, just kind of wrote down stuff about District C and like, I got some words in there. None of it was very good. I think I've trashed all of it. But um, once I picked this little nugget out, this little story, that's when it really started to click. Because this story was what was important to me and what really changed me. And that's when I realized I had to write about me and not about what district, I love District C, but the essay was about me and when I got a District C. Not necessarily like telling them about District C, even though I love doing that. Um, I had to talk about me in this. And I think that was what I really struggled with. I wanted to talk about District C, but um, I talked about my, the prompt kind of guided me towards it actually. So the Common App has like, I think six or seven prompts you can choose from. Some are better than others in my opinion, but um, I chose this prompt. It's about personal growth. Um, and so that was kind of the one that went as closely with District C as I could get. So I decided to, to go with that one and just see what I can do. Um, and it ended up pulling the good stuff actually out of me was having this prompt. So um, it kind of guide you into telling admissions what they want to hear, which was great. But um, so when I was writing this, it was kind of like, it was painful at first. Like I'd try and write something, I'd go back and I'd be like, oh my gosh, this sounds horrible. But once I got to the point where I had this story, I could really run with it. I just wrote and wrote and wrote. I wrote everything. I think I wrote like a thousand words at first, just for this essay. And I, but, and then I finished that. I was like, wow, I got my story. I got how I grew, but it was so long. And then, I mean, honestly, it was way, way, way too long. I had to cut it down so much, but that's kind of that another lesson that I learned through this process. It's always good to write a lot and then cut it down because you end up getting this really concise, um, the most important part of what you actually want to say, which is the most important part, because I would write these really, really long chunks, but when you cut them down, they're super concise and nice for someone to read. Um, But yeah, so I wrote this essay. um, It was, but then the cutting down process, it took, I, I had to say at least 20 hours of time revising, editing this thing, because it's so much just, you want to put your best self forward. You want to put the person that the admissions per office wants to read about. I know exactly where you guys are right now. You want to tell them super, something super special. You want to sound like you're going to be the best student there. I wanted to sound like I was the perfect student for Duke University. Like I was going to be the, the next Cameron crazy on my application. Like I, I was desperate. I was like, I have to get in. Like this is this essay is all, everything I have, this is on, everything I have is on the line with this essay. Um, but it's, it's, it is, but it isn't at the same time. Your essay, you just want to tell them about yourself. It's not a time to be um, like trying to sound too pretentious or use big words or to use vocabulary that you don't know. It's just, you want to hear your voice. And I think that's what I kind of came to the end realizing that they want to hear about my voice and about me. If they don't want to hear about District C, they don't want to hear about big words I looked up in a dictionary. They want to hear your voice and how you grew through a pro- through something. They don't care what it is, at least for this common app. They care that you grew and that you added value to something else. And I think that was what, I don't know, came to, it only came to the end. That was what really realized. But it took me the whole process to get there. I felt like I didn't actually know what I was doing until the end of the last essay, which is good, but bad. And I hope that I can give you guys this advice so you don't have to learn it at the end like I did. Um, But in this whole process, I think um, it's important to ask for help from others and 
definitely look at what others have given you as feedback, like Carmen said. I know when I was writing this, um, I look back at, we had these little reviews at the end of every cycle when I did my um, District C experience, where um, either Dan or Ann would write this really nice paragraph about um, what your strengths were, what you should work on for the next cycle, like just kind of a recap of how your cycle went. And I looked back at those when I was writing these essays, what Ann, um, Ann is my coach for all three cycles, so she got to know me really, really well through that. And looking back at that feedback really gave me some key points about myself because it's almost stuff you don't realize. When you're writing about like your growth and how you add value, it's kind of hard to divide, define it yourself. It's, it's really important to ask other people or, or um, consult other people about how you added value to something. I think that that's, it was really important to get the feedback others for that. Um, yeah, just, I don't say that um, writing is not my strength. I'm not a good writer. I never, I, English was always my weakest subject, but um, I think one thing I really want to share is that you don't have to be a good writer to write a good essay. Um, you can craft a good story, whether you're the best writer out there, you've won a prize for a book you wrote, or you can be a writer like me who writes out of desperation for English papers. But, and you can still be successful on these essays. Um, I wrote just my voice. I wrote like I talked. I, I wasn't trying to um, be anything I wasn't. Um, a couple people I had edited. it. Um, I had my mom look at it. I had, I think I had one friend look at it, um, but I had make a separate doc for them to edit and then they would put their edits on that doc. And then I had one main doc for myself that I would like transfer the edits or not because I wanted it to be my voice in the end. And I knew that like, other people might want to add vocab or change sentence structure, and sometimes it's needed. Like sometimes the grammar is bad, or sometimes the sentence structure is confusing. Um, but I wanted it to be my voice in the end, and I think that's um, one thing that really came clear to the admissions officers. Um, because I, I was, I remember sitting there at Duke. They have these admitted student days called Blue Devil Days, um, and they bring you all into the Duke Chapel. Like all the admitted students that got into Duke that year, they bring you into the chapel, and they're like we picked every one of you for a reason. We built this class from like, from taking all the, they had 42,000 applications this year that they read for 1700 spots. And they built this, they built a class. They take, they say this student will add this, this student will add this. And they, they build a class that's diverse and that everybody contributes value to. And the Dean of Admissions got up in front of us at, in the Duke Chapel and was like, we picked all of you because you would add value to this class. Um, and that's what kind of struck me is that I didn't know when I was writing my admissions, my essay, I knew I wanted to write about something good, but you have to add, you have to be a person that adds value. And I think that we all, you are all, all got into district C for a reason. You're all smart and you all clearly add value. Just even having the district C experience adds value um, to you and then that you can add to a university one day. Um, but I think that this whole concept of value, you have to find what value you will give and write a story and show them that, that value. This is what I kind of got to by the end of this whole process. It was months and months. It was like a full-time job at one point, at some points, um, that this, cause it took so many hours of my time, but, um, find what you find your value. I mean, I know for me personally, when I started this, I said, I'm a boring person. I'm, I was raised, my family's like, my parents aren't divorced. I like, I have pretty normal life. Like I have a nice house. I've lived here my whole life. I live in Cary, North Carolina. Like I live a pretty comfortable life here. Um, and so I was like, I'm not special. I don't have anything to do, like no value, unique experiences. But I realized that District C was that unique experience for me. And it can be your unique experience too. Because what I got at District C will be completely different than what anybody else gets at District C. I think that's what's really important to realize about your District C experience is that all of us gain something really neat from it, but it's all these different unique things that can add value to a school. So you can write about District C or you can write about something else really cool that you did, but um, we all have a way to add value to a school. And it's just conveying it, and I think that we can all do. But yeah yeah that is that is fantastic advice thanks kristen there's um 
there's a great, there are a couple of great questions that have come in. I'm going to pick the middle one because I think it relates to your story, Kristen. So Keith is asking, so we're talking about imperfections, like how you grew through them as well as how you plan to work with it in the future, be good for a common app scenario. And I believe Kristen, if I, I may not have the details down exactly, but I believe in your essay about your experience with district C, you conveyed a story about how you grew from X to Y yeah, and X was something that you want you weren't feeling so good at, and you ended up at Y. So yeah. would yeah. that be kind of an imperfection that you felt like you worked on through? Definitely, it was an imperfection that I felt was a perfection. I I was like when I first started District C, I hated group work. Like I thought group work was just the worst. I refused to work with anybody. I would work like by myself or working with a group, or if we were forced to work in groups, I would do all the work and just forget what anybody else had to say and I thought that was great like I was like wow I'm the best person in this group like my work is fantastic but then I got to district C and I realized that group work is literally the best thing you can do um by the end I realized that I'm not always right and that other people who are who normally might not speak out might have the most amazing things to say that you've ever heard and it was in this last cycle my cycle three um I had the most diverse group and probably the most like interesting group. Um, there were two really quiet people in the group and then two more like loud outgoing people. Um, and that really was my kind of story that I wrote about um, us in this group with the, with the whole dynamic there. And that it was like the imperfection turned kind of not to a perfection, but it was something that I worked on from start to finish. And I think that's what really like, I think it would be good to write about an imperfection because, or at least how you grew from it. Um, yeah, I think that'd be good. Does that answer hey. the question? I kind of got lost in it, I think, but. Um, yeah, and Keith, feel, I, 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 that was great. Keith, feel free to type, type back in if you have any follow-ups on that. Um, and Dan, if I could just yeah. hook on that. Yeah, I think do. that that's, um, that shows a lot of self-awareness and maturity when you can say, um, you know, maybe not sure an imperfection or a failing um, and, and to reflect on that in a good way, right? That you're a work in progress. Um, but, and, and also understanding that um, as an adult, you're going to have plenty of situations where, man, I wish I would have handled that differently. I wish I would have gone about that in this way. Or now that I have this experience, I, I see his perspective and I would have, ha I would have handled it differently. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of good, rich things come out of reflecting on imperfections, areas for growth, failures, and situations with, where you um, wish you would have handled things differently, or now given more life experience, you have the tools to handle it differently in the future. Yeah, and it seems to make sense. I think both of you are hitting on a common theme, which is you want to convey who you are, right? All of us are human. Humans are by nature imperfect. So if we're growing and learning from that imperfection, that's, that's a good thing. Um, Carmen, there are two questions that I'm going to try to link together here. Uh, they overlap. So one of them is, any recommendations on how to select a topic if you're debating between a few? And the related question is, um, what if you try to link a couple of experiences with a common theme, like for example, building self-confidence, if there are a couple of stories that you want to use to build that, that uh, instead of choosing between them, maybe combining them to convey something about yourself. What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Sure, yeah. Um, so I think that's where regular reflection is important because you you might be drafting on one topic and then think mm, there's no, there's not a lot there but this seems richer or i feel more comfortable this is more in my wheelhouse this is more a reflection of who i am so i don't think it's something where you just kind of pick a topic out of, out of a hat right and I, kristen i don't know if you you would say that there's an evolution process that happens in in how you eventually come to what you're writing about um, but just as you would write anything else kind of the drafting phase you you may look at different angles to go about different topics um, and yeah i mean 
again, I think like the example I shared was le um, talking about less of a, maybe a project or a thing and more about how, how you grew or, or how that experience shaped you. Right. So more in an active voice. Um, I don't know, Kristen, do you have anything to add? In, in that? Yeah. With what you're saying about the evolution thing. Um, I definitely started writing about multiple topics. I wrote like a couple, like just starting, just brainstorming kind of things on several topics. And the only one I could get like actually going with was district C. I think that like once you start to get going on something and you need to find that topic that makes your wheels turn, um, that you can just start writing and just run with. Um, because otherwise it's just not, if you're not feeling it, then the admissions officer is not going to feel it. Um, you kind of got to just get, get, you'll find a topic that gets in your, kind of gets your wheels turning. But um, one thing I would say is that with the, with trying to link multiple experiences together, I think that could almost be difficult and maybe distracting rather than trying to focus on, I think it's more important to tell one really good one and tell a really good story and get really deep into it rather than trying to connect multiple things. Because I think, I mean, it could, it could work in some scenarios, but in other ways it can be distracting with only 600 words. You have to kind of get, go deep instead of go wide. Yeah, I would agree with that too. Um, I think concrete examples are really where you're going to be answering all of the questions that admissions officers have instead of leaving them feeling like, how are they, where were they headed with all this? It's, it's, there wasn't a cohesive narrative in the same way that there would be if you really took the time to camp out uh, on one example or one instance. Yep, and that goes back to one of Carmen's original points, which is depth over breadth, which is a, a good, uh, a good pithy takeaway for this. Um, so this I'll throw out to both of you. Maybe Kristen, you can start uh, since you're fresh off of actually writing an essay and thinking about this very question. It's it's a great question. How did you balance the idea of show not tell? in your essay? For example, did you introduce the topic and then go into your story or just dive in and explain throughout? That's my biggest difficulty with writing the common app essay. And I imagine you thought about this with your District C story, like, do I need to explain what District C is? Do I need to explain how it works? Or do I just get into kind of the meat of the, of the story? Oh, I struggled with this so much. Yeah, I, I, feel your, I feel your pain because I struggled with the same thing. Um, how I introduced mine, just I started with just a little bit about District C. I focused more on the story and the people more than I did on like, what is District C? Like, how, how long was it? Like, I focused more on just this little zoom in almost. I gave, a, I gave enough context to kind of like, so they weren't like, what the heck is District C? Like, I don't know what this is. But so they got a little bit of context just so they had some idea what I was doing with my time. And then but I spent the majority of my time in that story. Like, um, I think the whole, that story was like the meat of my essay. Um, I kind of just, I, I brief introduction, like with the, with a hook and stuff, I wrote the hook last and then the conclusion last, but that little bit of context and then just like your story, basically like not much. It's more about you and your story than it is about context or like description. Of, of like what's going on. Car Carmen, any reactions to that yeah. perspective? Yeah, so if I were reading someone's essay about District C, maybe I would want to know, um, you know, like something, so just off the top of my head, right? Um, so I applied for and was chosen to participate in District C, which is, um, you know, in where I had the opportunity to work with this business over the course of X many weeks and um, you know just to give maybe a one or two sentence about district C sometimes people put um, a website in, in parentheses so if a reader is really curious they can go to the website and learn more and get more That's more good. depth there um, but it's more about why it's impressive that you were involved in, in uh, district C and and the um, the depth of the work that you did as a result, like the different, the unique kind of experience that, that you had um, and how it was impactful. That's important. Does that yep. make sense? Yep. I definitely, yeah, totally agree with that. 
Great. Um, some more good questions coming in. Um, I didn't, I didn't have my real awakening about what I'm most passionate about until this year. Is that, is that going to hurt me in my application process or how to, how to deal with that or handle that? I can, I can kind of go ahead on that. I still okay. don't know what I'm doing. I have like, I, <laughs> me either. I'm still <laughs> looking for a passion somewhere. Um, I, yeah. Um, that's great that you found your passion this year, at least because I'm still looking for mine. But um, <laughs> one thing I struggled with was trying to pick a school. I know for Duke, you have to put engineering or arts and sciences. And it says like, why, which school you pick. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is like a life decision right here. Like I'm going to have to pick something and I don't have really have a passion, but um, I say just yeah, like you obviously done stuff like leading up to this point that was meaningful. Um, and I say focus on that. Like you don't have to have a focus to like a true passion to really, to have had a valuable four years and have a had a valuable um, time in school and done meaningful things. Like I haven't, I don't have a passion, but I know I really like service. I did a lot with my key club. I was super involved in key club for all four years. And so I chose to write about that. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not pursuing a career in like, um, nonprofit management, but, um, I know that like, that was something that was important to me. And I still, it's not my passion, but it's something I really enjoyed. I can write about that easily, even though it wasn't like a pa academic passion of mine. And I think sometimes it's easy for people to get hung up on the word passion. Like I have to find the passion, right? This is going to define my life, the passion of my life. Um, and instead it, it might be more productive to think about it in terms of your purpose, right? Like your gifts and how you, um, what you were created to do or where you, um, just come alive. Um, and that that is probably going to change over the course of of your life many times, um, and so you know I think you can come out of experiences and talk about them in the in the way that this I'm understanding that I went through the district C experience, for example, for this purpose, right? To to grow in this way, it's it's helped spark an interest or a passion in me for this season or, you know, for this time. And this is how I'm going to continue to explore it. Right. Um, so it's less of a destination and more of a journey. Hmm. That's a great way to put it. Um, Carmen, a really specific nuts and bolts question about uh, what admissions officers are looking for. Are there personal level characteristics that admissions officers look for outside of persistence or are those dis or are they distracting is the question. Sure. So I think when a student, it starts with that question that that can be really difficult to say, okay, I'm going to pick a topic so I can demonstrate persistence. Right. Um, so I think if you think about it the other way and, and you look at it in a different way, so that after I've written my essay, I'm able to pick it apart like I did in my example and, and identify the characteristics that the reader may elicit from what I've written, right? So I'm not writing for persistence, but in the process of writing, I'm, sh I, I'm um, taking away these pieces. So kind of, it's hard to like put a different hat on and think what am I learning about the, the student or the, the author of this essay um, in, in the process, but I think it's um, a lot easier to do that on the back end after the essay is written. Does that help? Yeah, so reversing, reversing the order of the thinking there. And Kristen, you, it sounds like you went through this, right? You were trying to figure out like what was your like what were you trying to demonstrate about yourself and through writing about the experience, you discovered that? Is that? Yeah, I like, so I kind of had to, th I had to think a lot about District C and think a lot about like how it really changed me. Like I knew I was like, District C is life changing, but I didn't, I couldn't define like what was really, like what was changed about me or like what was, what new characteristic I developed. So I kind of, it was like self-reflection. It was a self-reflection part that Carm was talking about, kind of sitting and just thinking about like, how, how did District C really change me? 
Um, how do I different when I came out of it? How is how am I a different person? And like, how did this experience help shape who I am? I think when it, when I reflected, I was able to get into something that was that that showed um, like a really unique characteristic about me. More than just thinking, okay, I'm going to show that through District C, I was I was transformed by now I can do group work. But it was more like a reflection, for sure. So you didn't start with. I'm going to try to prove that I was, you know, confident, you know, eloquent, whatever, like these attributes would be. You started with like the personal transformational. Yeah. I started with what, I started with like what district C meant to me almost. And from that, like that I got into what I was like, what I could add. I didn't actually think like, I'm going to add value to Duke university by my, ability to have a growth mindset or like my ability to work with others. I started with just like, how did this change me? And it kind of morphed into, um, I'm someone that can bring people together and work with others. Yeah. And it sounds like an authentic experience. Go ahead, Carmen. Yeah. I think, I mean, you want to walk away from, from what you're writing and feel like these are the three attributes of who I am that the reader can take away from what I've written. Right whether it's, okay, they can tell from this essay that I'm courageous, that I am, you know, collaborative, and that I, um, w- that I conduct myself with integrity, whatever it is, right? You cannot hit on every single characteristic, um, but you want to feel like after you've produced it, that there are a couple, there are a few takeaways that, the, that you're giving the reader that really reflect who you are and, and what values, right, going back to that soul part, are, are important to who I am as an individual. Yep, and it sounds like part of the message is, oh, go ahead, Kristen. I just had a, just a reflection real quick. I applied for Moorhead Kane last year, and one of the essay prompts was, um, like, what's the situation you wish you would have done differently? Um, and, like, how would you have changed it? And that essay is probably the best example of like finding yourself at the end of it, finding your morals at the end of it. Because I wrote this essay, um, just like this one experience, I was like, oh crap, I should have done that. Or like, and I just wrote it. And then at the end, I was like, wow, this shows that I care about like what, what um, doing the right thing. This shows that I'm um, like, might be a little bit shy at times, would try to deal with, do it. like, it was just like, it really showed several characteristics about me and my personality and like who, who what my values are. Um, through this essay. I didn't even go into the essay writing about it. I went to this essay thinking, oh crap, I did something wrong. But mm-hmm. at the end, it shows my values. It showed who I was as a person. Um, so I think that's a good example. Yeah, that's my favorite essay. By yeah. the way. <laughs> I think we get the most out of, uh, out of a student really there when there's some vulnerability. Um, so. All right, one more question. Um, and I'll throw this out. Neither one of you can jump on it from different angles. Uh, for essays like com- for the Common App, they give different essay prompts. I'm assuming they're choices. Is it good if you're able to almost answer a few prompts at the same time? Is that kind of the point, or should you take a different approach? I I can just say I. I didn't think any of them applied to me at first and I kind of chose that one just because I had to choose one. But, um, I think, um, I think you should choose the prompt that speaks to you the most. And you think for me, it's like the prompt helped draw out what I needed to say. Um, whatever prompt pretty much intrigues you and you think will, will show what's best about you. Um, just show, or you let you tell your story, um, in the best way is what I would say. Yeah, and I think, again, kind of with the the idea of do we incorporate many ideas and and how things can get muddled that way, um, again, admissions officers or or admissions offices are very intentional about what they're asking, but when they're giving you choice in your prompts, they're not necessarily looking for you to incorporate other answers from those other prompts into one. Does that make sense? So, um, So they're it's better for you to really put those other prompts aside, I think, and focus in on what you're trying to answer and, um, and, and 
you know, then that, that, that's a, a better use of, of time and energy than trying to look at the other things and what would I have written in the other prompts that I need to weave in here, right? Um, so just try, try to kind of zone in once you've um, chosen a prompt and a topic and um, keep, keep revising. It, it takes a lot of time, it really does. Um, but like, like Kristen said, hopefully in the process, you learn a lot about yourself. And that's a really good foundation for um, you thinking about your high school experience, but also thinking about um, who you wanna be, what you wanna do, how you want to have impact on your college campuses as well. Great. Well, that's a good note to end on. Um, Carmen and Kristen, thank you so much. This was fantastic. Your perspectives are invaluable. I can't wait to hear the reactions from folks um, in the coming days and weeks, but appreciate your time, your preparation for this. Uh, um, I, I think it's been really, really helpful. So thank you both. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Um, for the participants, I'm going to paste in the chat a link to a very quick survey. As we're thinking about running these kinds of workshops in the future, we want to get your feedback so that we can constantly improve. Um, it shouldn't take more than three to five minutes. You should see the link in the chat there. Go ahead and click on that if you can. Um, thank you all. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks again, Kristen and Carmen. Really appreciate it. Good luck out there. <laughs> You're going to do great. Thanks, everyone. This was great. Good luck. <laughs>